If you forgot Valentine's Day, here's a quick solution using Adobe InDesign CS5 and the Glyphs panel. So I'm going to go to InDesign. Here's how we're going to set up our document. So I want to do a new document, letter sized, in portrait orientation. And I'm going to put a half inch margin all around. For my number of columns, I'm going to want two. And for my gutter, I'm going to use a measurement of one inch. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to need to put a couple guides on the page too. I'm going to drag a horizontal guide down to half of the page width, 4.5 inches, actually four and a quarter inches. And I'm going to do two other guides a half inch apart from that. So three and a quarter inches. These are my smart guides here. Um, and I'm taking too much time. So I'm going to simply go up here to my control panel and with the guide selected, type in the measurement, three and a quarter inches. I'm going to do the same thing to add a second horizontal guide at four and a quarter inches. So what this is going to do is give me a nice one inch channel in the center. Now that I have that, I'm going to switch to my type tool and I'm going to draw a text frame. It doesn't really matter what size. So with my cursor inserted, you can see my eye, my eye beam blinking, I'm now going to go to my window menu, drag down to type and tables and over to glyphs. So window menu, type and tables and glyphs. And this is going to bring up one of my favorite InDesign features, the Glyphs panel. I'm going to move it over so you can see it on your screen. And what the Glyphs panel will do is allow me to put a font in and see all of the characters, or even some of the characters, in it. So the font that I'm looking for is Zaf Dingbat. So I'm just going to enter that in the field at the bottom right. And when I hit return or tab out of that field, I can see all of the characters for this font. Now, if you're familiar with Zap Dingbats, you know that it's symbols. And here's what I'm looking for, the heart. So here's the great thing about the Glyphs panel in InDesign. I have my cursor in a text frame. All I need to do when I'm in the Glyphs, Glyphs panel is double click the character and it will put it on my page. And you know what? I'm done with the Glyphs panel. I'm going to close it. I don't need it again. I've now got this text character on my page that I can highlight and change the size of. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to go up to my control panel and I'm going to change the font size so it's much larger. I'm going to do it, let's say 48 points just to get me started. And that's not quite as big as I want to. So using my keyboard shortcut, command, shift, and period, I'm going to make it larger. And I'm going to spend too much time doing that. And in fact, I'm not crazy about the way this heart looks as it is. I'd like to make it a little bit wider. So instead of using it as a text character, I'm going to switch tools to my selection tool. I'm going to select the frame. So the frame is selected. You can see its bounding box and its handles. And I'm going to go to my type menu and drag down to create outlines. And what that's going to do is it's going to take this character and it's going to convert it to vector outlines. So this is no longer type. I can now use my selection tools or my direct selection tool or even my pen tool to modify it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take away some of the points and I'm going to switch to my direct selection tool, my white arrow, and select some of them. I'm just going to make it a little bit wider on each side. I'm going to do this quickly for the sake of time. And I can see that the top curves are a little flat, so I'm going to switch to my pen tool. And I'm going to maybe get rid of some of the points. Let me just change that curve a little bit. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So now my heart is pretty much done. I'm going to fix this up here. And the same on the other side. So with my heart done, I'm going to switch uh, zoom out. I can now transform this like any other object. So I can command shift on the Mac or control shift on the PC and drag the heart so it sizes proportionally. And now I'm just going to position it. Now if I go back to my finished example, you can see that I'm working on the bottom right quadrant. That's because this is going to have to be folded to become a greeting card. 
um, using one sheet of paper. You can customize it if you want to print it so it's on the front and back if you have a printer that will do that. But in order uh, to save some time, we'll do it this way. So I'm gonna position my heart down at the bottom. So now that my heart is a vector object, um, I can treat it like any other vector object. And I'm going to add a fill here. Um, I'm going to option shift drag it to the right and I'm going to add another fill. Since it's Valentine's Day, we'll make it magenta. And I'm gonna send that behind the other one. And I wanna make another duplicate behind the white heart. So now that I've got these two hearts on either side of the center heart, I can size and transform them, group them, make them smaller, position them. And I'm gonna ungroup them, and I'm just gonna use my free transform tool here in Adobe CS, InDesign CS5. I can just position my cursor to the top right, and it will change to the rotate tool. Select the left heart, do the same thing. And if I go back and take a look at my finished example, I've got a little red heart in the middle of everything. So I'm gonna take my white heart, duplicate it by option dragging, resize it, fill it with red, position it, and there we go. So I'm gonna quickly save this because I haven't done that yet. And I'll just call it Valentine one. And I'll save that. The last thing I need to do is put a pink box behind all of this. If you look at my finished example, I've got a pink field here. So I'm going to actually group all of these just so they're one unit and I can move them around easily. I'm going to use my rectangular shape tool, drag out a box, switch the stroke and fill, and change that fill to 100% magenta. And I'm gonna just drag my swatches panel over here so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, in my swatches panel, I'm going to change the tint to probably about 40%, I think that's good. And I'll send it to back, so object arrange, send to back. And there we go. So let me get my swatches panel out of the way. And I'll select my hearts and just center them within the field. Now I'm almost done. The next thing I need to do is put some type on the inside. So happy Valentine's Day. And I'm just going to drag out a type frame. With my type tool, I'm going to enter that type, that text rather. Select it, center it. Select the text frame and I'm going to go into text frame options. So if I go to object and drag down to text frame options, what that will allow me to do, so bring the window over, is change the vertical justification alignment to center. What that will do is it will put this text in the center of the text frame. So now I'm just going to style it. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to add a color to it. So if I bring my swatches panel back again, go to window and swatches, which here in CS5 has moved to the color group. So window, color, swatches. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. Window, color, swatches. That'll bring up my swatches panel, and I'm going to change the fill color of the text to red. So we'll repeat the red that we have in the heart there. Last thing I need to do is rotate this frame because when it's folded, it needs to be right side up. So with it selected, I'm simply gonna to switch to my selection tool, go up into my control panel here. Zoom in a little bit. And I'm just gonna use my rotate command once, twice. Now I'm gonna undo that because one thing that will make it easier is if I change my point of reference to the center, so up here in this little tic-tac-toe board, I'm just gonna change that to center, okay? So now when I zoom out, you can see when I use my rotate commands, the frame will rotate around the center and I won't have to reposition it. So if I go back to my finished example, you can see I'm done. So of course it looks a little bit different here, but 
you know, variety is the spice of life. So certainly you can create a custom design with hearts. You don't have to copy mine. And all you need to do now is print it out on letter size paper. And what you're going to want to do is simply fold it. Fold it in half lengthwise first and then fold it again widthwise. And you'll have a nice little greeting card to go with those flowers that you have to go and get on the way home. So next year, plan ahead. But for now, happy Valentine's Day.